So in this video, we're going to be simplifying thirds, and you already understand the mechanics behind how to simplify thirds. You probably just haven't thought about it before. So let's do an example. I can show you what I mean. So here we have the square root of eight. That is a third. Now the key here is going to be taking that number eight and breaking it up into two factors, but one of those factors has to be a square number. Here are our square numbers. All right, so these are our square numbers here, all the way from 2 squared to 15 squared. Now, what can I break 8 up into factors where one of them is one of those numbers? Well, it's pretty obvious that root 8 can be written as root 4 times 2. Okay, so where do I go to from here? Well, I can actually write it as two separate square roots now. I can write it as root 4 times root 2. And finally, this square root of 4, I know what the square root of 4 is. The square root of 4 is 2. So now I get 2 times root 2. I don't need the little time sign there. I just get 2 times root 2. And that is the simplified version of root 8. Root 8 is equal to 2 root 2. Now I said you already knew how to do this. What did I mean by that? It's actually just an application of index laws. Because you should know that the square root of 8 can be rewritten in indices as 8 to the power of 1 half. Now, if it can be written as 8 to the power of 1 half, I can now start using my index laws to simplify it. Simplify it. So, I can say that this is the same as 4 times 2 to the power of 1 half. And then I can use my index laws to say that that's the same as both of those raised to the power of 1 half. 4 to the power of 1 half times 2 to the power of 1 half. And I now know that 4 to the power of a half is the same as the square root of it, right? So that's the same as the square root of 4, which is 2, times the square root of 2. Root 2. All right, so any third law you learn, it's not actually a third law. It's an index law in disguise. Now, I never expect you to do anything that looks remotely like this. I just wanted to show you that thirds and indices are the same thing. The third laws you learn are the same when it comes to indices. So I'm going to do another couple of examples real quick. The square root of 45. Now, we need to break that up into factors, one of which is one of these numbers. Uh, now, it obviously can't be greater than 49. It also can't be greater than half of 45, because you need it to be at least two times something. So it can't be greater than 22.5. So it's got to be one of these three if it's anything. And we know that root that 45 is the same as 9 times 5. So that's going to be the same as root 9 times 5, which is equal to um, root 9 times root 5. The root of 9 is 3. 3 root 5 is our answer. So root 32, again, let's look here. Now we know that this factor that we're looking for can't be more than half of 32. Half of 32 is 16. 16, that's what we can use here. So it's root 16 times 2. All right, now I've been sort of doing this step here. You kind of don't have to do that step. You can jump straight to this step. Root 16 coming out of the square root sign. Root 16, the square root of 16 is 4. 4 root 2. Save us a little bit of time there in our working. And one more example here, root 75, I see 75, I see the 5 on the end, I get suspicious. I think maybe 25 might be a good one. And yes, 25 times 3 is the same as 75. So root 25 times 3. And again, I can skip this intermediary step, this root 25 can come out, I get 5 root 3. So that's simplifying thirds, but we can also kind of do that in reverse. So these things that I've worked towards are called simplified thirds, but the things that I started with are called entire thirds because the entire number is under the square root sign. So what if we were given a simplified third and we wanted to express it as an entire third? If we were given something like 6 times root 2, we need to write it as two thirds multiplied by each other. So 6 squared is 36. So root 36 is equivalent to the number 6 times root 2. And now we can merge those thirds into a single third and call it root 72, 36 times 2. Root 72 is the same as 6 root 2. Obviously, you can check your work 
by just trying to do the whole thing backwards and seeing if you get back to there again. Now, what if it looked like this, negative eight root three? We've got to put that negative out. We, we can't put the negative into a square root. That's like complex numbers. That's imaginary numbers. We don't want to deal with that. So we'll put the negative one first, multiplied by eight, but eight squared, because we need to put the eight in a square root. So we get root eight squared, which is 64. That's equivalent to the number eight, multiplied by that root three that's right there. And now we've got this negative one out the front. We don't need to write the number one here. And then a root of 64 times three, which is 192. Done. Learn these and then practice a bunch of those.